My next question is what is the absolute maximum bending moment due to a moving UDL longer than the span of a simply supported beam? If you see when a simply supported beam is subjected to a moving UDL longer than the span then the absolute maximum bending moment occurs when the whole span is loaded m max max is equal to wl into 2 by 8 so this is the condition which your maximum bending moment occurs when the whole span is loaded so the absolute maximum bending moment occurs at this point of time moving on to our next question we have the question is state the location of maximum shear force in a simple beam with any kind of loading in a simple beam with any kind of load the maximum positive shear force occurs at the left hand support and the maximum negative shear force occurs at your right hand support. The next question is what is meant by maximum shear force diagram? If you see due to a given system of rolling loads the maximum shear force for every section of the guider can be worked out by placing the loads in appropriate positions. When these are plotted for all the sections of the rider, then the diagram that we obtain is your maximum shear force diagram. So by placing your loads in appropriate positions, you can obtain your maximum shear force diagram. This diagram yields the design shear for each cross section. Moving on to our next question we have what is meant by influence lines? An influence line is a graph showing for any given frame or truss. The variation of any force or displacement quantity such as shear force, bending moment, tension, deflection for all the position of moving unit as it crosses the structure from one end to the other. This is meant by the influence lines. Moving on, we have our next question to be What are the uses of influence line diagrams? The influence lines are very useful in quick determination of the reactions, your shear force and bending moment of similar functions. At a given section under any given system of moving loads, Influence lines are useful in determining the load position to cause maximum value of a given function in a structure on which the load positions can vary. So the load position to cause maximum value you are going to determine the function in a structure on which the load positions can vary. Moving on to our next question we have What do you understand by the term reversal of stresses? In a certain long trusses the web manners sorry members can develop either tension or compression. depending upon the position of live loads. 
this tendency to change the nature of stress by developing either a tension or compression is called as reversal of stresses a next question is state mulla breslau principle mulla breslau Breslau principle states that if we want to sketch the influence line for any force quantity like thrust shear reaction support moment or bending moment in a structure we remove the structure resistant to that force quantity we apply on the remaining structure a unit displacement corresponding to that force quantity so this is what is meant by muller breslau principle our next question is what is the necessity of a model analysis if you see when the mathematical analysis of a problem is virtually impossible then the mathematical analysis though possible is so complicated and time consuming that the model analysis offers a shortcut hence the importance of the problem is such that verification of mathematical analysis by an actual test is essential hence the actual test is done by using your model analysis so that makes model analysis essential a next question is define similitude similitude means similarity between two objects namely the model and the prototype with regard to their physical characteristics geometric similitude is similarity of form kinematic similitude is similarity of motion if the similarity is in dynamic or mechanical then it is known as dynamic or mechanical similitude which makes masses and forces to be similar the next question is what is the principle of dimensional similarity dimensional similarity means your geometric similarity of the form So this means that all the homologous dimensions of the prototype has some constant ratio. So this constant ratio is known as the principle of dimensional similarity. Our next question is name any four model making materials. some of the model making materials are as follows perspex plexiglass acrylic plywood sheet araldite and bakelite are some of the model making materials micro concrete mortar and plaster of paris can also be used for making models so these are the materials that can be used for making models our next question is what is dummy length in models test with bex 
deformator. If you see, dummy length is the additional length of about 10 to 12 mm. Left at the extremities of the model to enable any desired connection to be made with the gorges. So the dummy length is the additional length that is left at the extremities of the model. Our next question is what are the three types of connections possible with the model used with Bex deformator? So the three types of connections possible are hinged connection, fixed connection, floating connection. If you see hinged connection is having hinges and the fixed connection will be fixed. Floating connection will have a floating sort of attitude. So that is known as your floating connection. So these are the three types of connections possible with Beck's deformator. Our next question is what is the use of a micrometer microscope in model analysis with Beck's deformator? Micrometer microscope is an instrument that is used to measure the displacements of any point in the x and y directions of a model during tests with Beck's deformator. So if you see the use of micrometer microscope is to measure the displacement of any point in x and y directions of a model during test. Our next question is what is Eddy's theorem? Eddy's theorem states that The bending moment at any section of an arc is proportional to the vertical intercept between your linear arch and the center line of the actual arch. The bending moment at any section of an arch is proportional to the vertical intercept between the linear arch or the theoretical arch and the center line of the actual arch. So this is what is meant by Eddy's theorem. Our next question is which of the two arches that is circular and parabolic is preferable to carry a uniformly distributed load and why? Parabolic arches are preferably to carry distributed loads whereas the shape of the arch and the shape of the bending moment diagram are parabolic so this will carry distributed loads the intercept between your theoretical arch and the actual arch is zero everywhere. Hence the bending moment at every section of the arch will be zero for parabolic arch. Hence parabolic arch is much preferable in case of carrying a uniformly distributed load. Thank you so much for joining GTEC on structural analysis interview questions. Hope you would have got some idea about structural analysis.